Excellencies, President Archer, no. Madam Never mind. Chair, <laughs> members of the Academy, fellow participants, members of the Diplomatic Corps, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great humbling responsibility and a great honor to share with you our thoughts this afternoon. And of course, above all, we want to thank the Holy Father for the moral clarity and the unwavering voice in inviting us all to take on the challenging of examining this urgent human tragedy. Human trafficking viewed anthropologically is an empire with a hard to survey topography. Definite statistics, as Professor Archer suggested, are difficult to establish. The gulf between the estimates of the total traffic population and identified victims is enormous. We face a kingdom of the undercount. Trafficking resists easy generalizations. Its constituent units are diverse are and cautiously linked to disparate origins. It is composed of dissimilar parts. It contains incommensurable formations in different regions of the world. The enslavement of Thai girls for sexual tourism, the trafficking of unauthorized immigrants from Mexico and Central America for labor e exploitation in Southern California, and the child soldiers in Africa. It also involves cultural practices such as the trafficking of albinos for ritual practices, the estimated perhaps half a million Restavec children in forced domestic labor in Haiti, and the trafficking of brides from North Korea, Vietnam, and Indonesia to Taiwan, Japan, and China. In this presentation, we present an ecological conceptual framework placing victims at the center, but locating human trafficking in the context of globalization. We outline the range of trafficking mod modalities with a focus on the most vulnerable and weakest of victims. We examine the consequences to individuals and bring in our written text to the fore the voices of the forgotten victims in the empire of suffering, children and youth. It is by placing children and youth, the underage, at the epicenter that we hope to begin to build the architecture of the empathy that will be required at the center of raising consciousness for this horrific social phenomenon. Child trafficking can be broadly defined, and here we borrow from the ambassador's uh, definite statement in, uh, on this topic as, quote, taking children out of their protective environment and preying on their vulnerability for the purpose of exploitation. The trafficking of ch children internally in countries across transnational borders and across continents in the 21st century is closely structurally linked to the demand for, quote, cheap, malleable, and docile labor in sectors and among employers where the working conditions and the treatment of children grossly violates 
basic human rights. The occupations in which children are working as forced or, or slave laborers today are breathtaking. They include agriculture, including debt bondage, as mentioned in an earlier presentation. They include drug trafficking, children used as drug mules, are also as consumers and peddlers of narcotics, commercial sexual exploitation, and child soldiers, as well as the baby factories we reflected upon in the presentation by Dr. Williams. In the empire suffering other horrors, perhaps special horrors, await children whose fragile bodies and minds are shattered in calamitous human debasement and putrid sexual exploitation. Children in conditions of sexual slavery endure a world they are neither physically, maturationally, or psychologically able to cope with. Quote, sex trafficking has devastating consequences for minors including long-lasting physical, psychological, trauma, disease, drug addiction, substance addiction, unwanted pregnancy, malnutrition, social ostracism, and even death. The enslavement of children for sexual exploitation, including pornographic performances in the rapidly growing production of online sexual por uh, child pornography, the recruitment, harboring, and ongoing exploitation of children is the only major trafficking domain where women play a significant role. Women traffic children across borders, harbor them in clandestine sites, work as madams socializing children, into the sex industry. Second, the transgen it is a form of transgenerational exploitation involving an older generation and the younger generation. Third, the sexual enslavement of children is a double crime. It is a crime of the here and now, and it is a crime of the future. It derails children from mastering the developmental tasks in terms of maturation, cognitive, emotional, and moral development require for the transition to adulthood. Such derailment may explain why women who had been victims of trafficking sometimes graduate to become traffickers in a kind of left sen a life sentence where, as, as uh, Professor Archer reminded uh, us in her uh, exquisite presentation, manumission or exit from the culture of exploitation becomes an elusive mirage. Lastly, when girls become pregnant, pregnant in conditions of sexual slavery, a new generation of babies is born into sexual captivity. The quotidian conditions of slavery the physical restrictions, the controls, the psychological and physical torture, the everyday sadism, the unsanitary conditions, the sheer savagery of the sexual act with children lacking maturational readiness, the medical complications from tearing and scaring to stigmatize life-threatening venereal diseases, including HIV AIDS, hepatitis, and others, make this category of trafficking extraordinarily urgent. Children in conditions of sexual slavery are unable to psychologically cope with their situations or make meaning of their conditions. They oscillate, as the words of Gabriela, described in our text, reveal between a state of learned helplessness and the psychic dissociation from re the reality of the here and now.
Next. Three factors are essential in the equation of modern day trafficking of children. Vulnerable victims whose forced labor can be turned into economic value. As the Holy Father, John Paul II said, children thus become an instrument of gain. And third, as importantly, armies of Dante's carnal malefactors ready to consume the fruits of this bitter, bitterest of harvests. The weakness of the victim is a sine qua non and of course always present in the case of children. Trafficking today, it, this is part of a global and more uh, general pattern of trafficking that preys on the weak. It preys on excluded populations. Trafficking today turns the world's most vulnerable populations, undocumented immigrants, racial and caste minorities, people of color, indigenous population, the disabled, the abject, and children into, again, to quote the Holy Father, instruments of gain. At the center of the trafficking experience, as Professor Gallagher reported in her, in her extraordinary presentation, at the center of the trafficking experience has to be the individual who is enslaved. An ecological framework presented here suggests that the human experience is the result of reciprocal interactions between individuals and various layers of their environment with varying and significant implications for short and long-term adaptations. We borrow conceptually from the fund foundational work of Judy Bromfenberg and his so-called ecological model of human adaptation. The individual comes in direct contact with a variety of settings and systems referred to by Bronfenbrenner as microsystems. The exosystem in cons is const in the macrosystem is made up of interactions between settings, institutions, and social structures that have an influential but indirect effect on individual experiences and outcomes. The macro system is the most distal context. It is the dystopic global economic, historical, and cultural context setting the stage for human trafficking in the 21st century. The macro system of trafficking is now structured by the global economy. The globalization of inequality, structural adjustment shocks, global pauperism, as well as the historical and cultural context giving rise to the instrumental exploitation, commodification, and symbolic disparagement of stigmatized populations. The exosystem represents the anemic or complicit, corrupt institutional and legal frameworks. The specific niches of trafficking, labor, sexual, etc., as well as the networks of relationships and migration corridors established between, between sending and receiving communities that are never random. The microsystems represent the mechanisms of recruitment, abduction, transport, harboring, and the, the context of exploitation, the devil in the details, as Colonel San Martin uh, reminded us earlier today. At the individual level, experience will depend on age, gender, race, ethnicity, the extent and nature of the trauma, the length of enslavement, the nature of the relationships with the traffickers, the exploiters, and the authorities. Upon rescue and release, reentry, individual out outcomes will depend on rehabilitation, again, as the colonel reminded us in some cases, repatriation programs, individual differences in age, health, socioeconomic, socioemotional, cognitive resources, and structures of support. 
educational access, participation in the legitimate labor market, civic engagement, along with the ability to establish basic social trust, intimacy, and autonomy would represent significant landmarks on the road out of darkness. To echo Professor Archer, such outcomes would represent what perhaps, borrowing from our, our, uh, our colleague Orlando Patterson, uh, we can call a social rebirth for children. At the most distal level is globalization's dark side. Globalization's three M's, markets, media, and migrations are the macro context for human trafficking in the 21st century. The integration and disintegration of markets, new information, communication, and media technologies, the ease and declining cost of mass transportation, the brisk growth of inequality across the world, and new demographic factors are the rocket fuel behind globalization's new vertigo. Transnational pauperism, the implosion of the structures that codify familial and social norms, a new epidemiology of failed states, intensifying in the aftermath, in the aftermath of the Soviet collapse and the 2008 economic cataclysm have given human trafficking a global turn. Furthermore, in the postmodern dystopia, consumption comes to define the self, personhood, and citizenship, making the selling and buying of human life ubiquitous. Furthermore, the global integration and disintegration of markets have produced unprecedented levels of irregular migration worldwide. And Ambassador Swing gave us breathtaking statistics, the insertion of China into the global system of production, distribution, and consumption of uh, goods and services has sent 200 million immigrants uh, internally within the country. There are more children affected by I immigration, voluntary irregular force in China than there are people in Canada. 40 million children. The insertion of India into the global system of, of, uh, of production, consumption of goods and services has sent over 700 million people from rural areas into the cities two times the United States, the largest movement of people ever recorded in human history. The new information, communication, and media technologies have stimulated new patterns of trafficking, including the prostitution of minors, no longer transacted in dark alleys and silly brothels, but rather in fluid, ubiquitous internet, internet sites and via new mobile devices. Scholarly research in the United States and other parts of the world are beginning to outline the issues, the uses of digital technologies, mobile devices, tablets, smartphones, and social networking sites for human trafficking. Increasingly, scholars at the University of Southern California conclude the business of human trafficking is taking place online and over mobile phone, phones. Facebook the world's most ubiquitous social media site with 1.2 billion offers, uh, uh, users has become a most important conduit for the, to the sexual exploitation of children. By one estimate, about half of all online sexual exploitation today occurs on social, social networks. Contemporary human trafficking unfolds in a complex ec ecology with extended social, cultural, economic, technological, transportation, and financial networks in which people are recruited in the communities of origin and exploited by traffickers using deception, coercion, to uh, lure them and to control them. Conceptually, our eco ecological model very much builds upon the reflections of, of, uh, of Colonel San Martin, uh, referring to the Palermo Protocol, which specified three distinct definitional elements, the act, the means, and the purpose. Broadly speaking, microsystems subsume the act involving the recruitment, transport, harboring, and receipt of, 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 of children for trans, tra trafficking. In modern human trafficking, the arc of recruitment, transportation, harboring, and receipt of, of, of persons is wide indeed. It involves advanced transnational criminal networks, financial networks, um, and 
relying on sophisticated communications and transportation, finances, safe houses, self safe houses, uh, forging of documents, and the bribing of, of, author of authorities to mom and pop operations, trafficking the victim to a nearby village, or simply a boyfriend or an auntie prostituting a minor in a truck stop in a desolated highway. The means, the ecological model, in our ecological model, the exorcism tends to be enabled by broken, anachronistic, corrupt, or otherwise non-existent institutional and legal frameworks, enabling the use of force, deception, threats, coercion, abduction, and abuse of power, using the luring of victims. It is documented, there is a documented range in the deployment of force, deception, coercion, and abuse, which includes the force isolation and deprivation of physical movement, chaining, torture, mutilation, and burning, dragging, psychological manipulation, lying, and threatening, both the children and their relatives. These are aimed to render the traffic individual helpless, unable to act autonomously. In a way, this is the point of entry into the social death that Professor Archer reminded us is at the center of what we mean when we talk about slavery. The means arc to a pre-modern domination and subjugation of the human, uh, of the human body. Human trafficking interrupts the essential developmental progression, allowing for the establishment of what Eric Erickson called basic trust. Whether born into slavery, kidnapped, tricked, or sold, each of these cases will have a variety of lasting and uh, specific implications for the development of both basic trust and the attachments of children. Fundamentally, trafficking rips individual children from their family members and communities and isolates them in their new settings. There are far-reaching physical, and psychological implications of trafficking to its victims and survivors, concludes the American Psychological Association in its first ever presidential report on human trafficking. At the most basic level, victims will suffer for, from an array of health issues, including physical injuries, sexually transmitted diseases, malnutrition, as well as an array of somatic difficulties. Maltreatment from traffickers, employers, and exploiters often result in broken bones and teeth, brain injuries, dislocations, head injuries, which take years to heal. Sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV AIDS, as well as complications from hepatitis B and C, uterine infections, complications in pregnancy and infertility have been identified as secondary to trafficking. Other illnesses have been reported to be high among traffic victims, including malnutrition, malaria, asthma, a variety of lung diseases, anemia, gastrointestinal diseases, among others. There are a myriad of psychological consequences to trafficking resulting from the trauma following captivity that include both physical and sexual exploitation. As uh, Dr. Um, Carvalho uh, uh, reported this morning, the psychological repercussions suffered by victims of trafficking are reported to be significantly higher than for those of other victims of crimes. Reported symptoms are generally consistent with profiles of post-traumatic stress disorder, including depression, anxiety, somatic symptoms, hopelessness, guilt, shame, flashbacks, nightmares, and as again, uh, Professor Carvalho so beautifully shared with us this morning, loss of self-esteem. For children in particular who have been isolated, neglected, and abused, anxious, disorganized attachment, social and emotional withdrawal, aggression, and behavioral problems have been noted, 
Note that there is an attachment here depending, dependent upon a very perverse Stockholm syndrome identification with the aggressor, identification with the, with the torturer. Dissociation has been uh, a short-term cope, has been identified a, as a short-term coping mechanism to escape the intolerable has been uh, commonly report, but it is also important to keep in mind it has been linked to long-term difficulties, including future victimization. Amnesia, substance abuse, as uh, Professor Garbalo uh, shared with us this morning, as well as suicide, are all negative individual outcomes of trauma and victimization following traffic. The children in the empire of suffering are the victims of two simultaneous crimes. They are robbed of their childhood and they are robbed of their future. Forcing children into situations of slavery involves three criteria. The children become an instrument. They are extracting profit from her forced labor. Second. It removes her from the prescribed pathways that enable children the world over to reach and master culturally determined developmental milestones in the biological, emotional, cognitive, moral, and social realms required to succeed successfully make the transition to adulthood. Third, the trafficking of children is life-thwarting. It harms the child's physical, psychological, and moral well-being by placing children in contexts that are inherently dangerous and beyond their developmental readiness and maturational capabilities to meet such horrendous challenges. When children the world over are working through the developmental milestones, be them the Piagetian cognitive and moral tasks that uh, Professor Batero re reminded us uh, this morning, or achieving the Ericksonian developmental tasks of basic trust, industry, um, identity, and so forth and so, uh, and so on, the littlest denizens in the empire of suffering are removed from the challenges and joys of normative child development, swimming against a powerful undertow ever threatening to drown them. These most horrendous of crimes must be given an absolute priority for eradication. Thank you very much.